All right, this video is going to be about finding polar areas and uh, why you end up doing what you do because it's a little different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a circle and I'm going to find the area of the sector that I just drew. So that's between those two uh, radii and it's got an angle of theta, central angle of theta. Um, so what I do is uh, the area is going to be theta out of 2 pi. So that's the ratio of uh, the central angle to the total angles, which would be 2 pi radians. And then the area of the circle is just pi r squared. And then this simplifies down to 1 half um, r squared theta. Okay, so that's going to be really important. So that's the area of a sector. So what we do for a polar region, so this is kind of a typical polar region. It goes from, uh, I guess, that green radius to that purple radius. And then the curve is all, I don't know, curvy. Um, here's uh, theta equals alpha and theta equals beta. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide up the region. So I'm going to create a Riemann sum, basically. So I've divided up the region, and uh, each of these is a delta theta. So delta theta would be uh, beta minus alpha over n, where n is the number of sectors that I'm cutting it into. And in each of those intervals, I'm going to pick a particular point, just any point, it doesn't really matter, because eventually I'm going to take a limit and uh, create little arcs. So each of those now is a sector. So if I add up those sectors, it should approximate the area of the region. So I need some radii. So I would find the radius there, and then there, and then there, and there. And what I'd end up doing to approximate it is I'd write a summation. So it's approximately the sum in my case from one to four of one half and then r sub i squared and then delta theta and what will happen is that kind of in general the actual area would be the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from one to n of one half and then r r sub i squared and then delta theta so we're just adding up a bunch of sectors but then we know from experience that every time we have something like this and we take a limit, we end up with a definite integral. So this will actually be the definite integral from alpha to beta of 1 half r squared and then d theta. And then that you usually factor to look like this. So it's 1 half the integral from alpha to beta of r squared d theta. And that's where the whole idea comes from. Now using the idea is an uh, entirely different matter. But you have to know that so that you can do it. So I hope you found this helpful.